Hello, everybody, and welcome to A Plan to Succeed, Scheduling Horse Business Success in 2012. My name is Elizabeth McMillan, and I'm the editor and founder at equestrianprofessional.com, and my specialty is equine business and marketing strategies. As an equine business and marketing consultant, I've worked for a variety of high-profile equestrian athletes and horse businesses in a wide variety of disciplines and breeds, and also for equestrian-oriented businesses like Pure and Simple Cosmetics, Monaco Coach Company, and also Patagonia Clothing Company. I also spent about 25 years directly in the horse business and the hunter-jumper discipline. I also have with me tonight Pam Saul. Pam is the owner of Farm and Equine Business Services, LLC. She has worked as an accountant for many years and has a lot of experience with bookkeeping, cash flow management, and preparation of business plans. Pam is also the farm manager for Rolling Acres Show Stable and is, a, is very active in agriculture. She's on the Montgomery County Soils Conservation Board and she's vice president of the Maryland Farm Bureau PAC along with several other boards and committees. So Pam, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's get started, everybody. Um, I guess sort of start things off, I, I, I kind of have an observation. I, I know it's happened to me, and I was thinking it probably happened to a few of you. Have you ever kind of thought you had a fantastic month in your horse business and, you know, all excited about it, and you go to look at your books or you go connect with your bookkeeper and they tell you that you actually lost money and you're sitting there and you're thinking, Oh my gosh, how could that be? I sold two horses last month. I taught dozens of lessons or what have you. We went to X number of shows. How could that be? And I think that's happened to all of us in the industry at some point or another. And so really one of the most important things for horse professionals to do is to easily be able to connect their books and marketing to what's actually happening in their businesses. And at Equestrian Professional, we have a system that we call creating a cycle of success. And I've, I've spoken about this at a lot of different equestrian conventions. And while I'm not going to go into depth about it today, um, it basically involves building your horse business around your equine expertise in such a way that you continually increase your expertise, which is the foundation of your business. But also, you learn how to leverage it into your marketing, which then in turn helps you to unify your equestrian goals with your business goals, making them both much easier to attain. And so today, we're going to look at a really practical marketing and business strategy that's going to support you in doing this. So this webinar is going to be a little different than our regular seminars. Last year, I don't know how many of you are new to us, but last year, um, our webinars all had two portions. They had a, a live open session for for everybody, and then they had a private members-only session. And while we loved doing this, it also made them last about two hours. And so we kind of felt like it was a, a bit of a marathon, especially for our members. So tonight we're experimenting with a new format. Tonight everyone, members and non-members, are invited to attend this live lecture portion of tonight's event. However, rather than staying on the call for an additional hour and having the members portion, instead what we've done is created a special members-only toolkit, and we'll be explaining how to use it kind of during the webinar tonight. And members also gain access to the replay, which is really handy because then if you can't stay for the whole thing or you want to do a re review, you can just hop on the site and listen to the replay. And then we're also we've also set up a special forum where. It, after the webinar, maybe tomorrow or the next day or whenever you're thinking about it, you can ask quest additional questions that maybe relate to the webinar. So we're hoping this is going to provide even some additional support to our members, et cetera. Um, so tonight's really, what this is going to do is it's going to really make tonight more like a workshop really than a lecture. So do feel free to post your questions. We will try to pause and answer them as we go if possible. Um, but do keep asking questions, and you'll see a little question form there. So the first thing I want you all to do is, um, if you got our email confirmation, is to open up, um, there's an Excel calendar link that we included for non-members, and this is a free calendar that I downloaded from a company called Win Calendar for everybody to use. So you guys can download that from the link. If you're having trouble finding the link, just Google Win Calendar. 
2012, and you'll, Google will just take you straight over there, and you'll see on their page that you can download either a Excel file or a Word file of it. So for our non-members, there's a free calendar you can use, so you can kind of work along with us here. And then for our members, I made some customized changes to the version that you guys will be using. You'll see there's a link there for you right on the webinar page. And we'll discuss a little bit more about how I modified it for you at the, towards the end of the webinar. But for now, um, you know, go ahead and open it up just so that you have it handy. And then for those of you who are listening by phone or away from your computer, don't worry because we're going to explain things in such a way that you're going to really know what to do later when you have your desk in front of you or what have you. Okay, so those of you with the calendar, just to sort of familiarize yourself with it, you can change months by using the tabs on the bottom of the Excel page. Also, you'll see if you click the, click the links above that, sort of right below the calendar portion, it's going to open up a new uh, web browser, and it'll show you an annual calculator. And one of the things I kind of liked about this Win Calendar thing was that it's also going to show you some of the holidays and dates that you may want to enter in your calendar in a minute here as we're talking. So. Anyway, it should be a good tool for you. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to create the bulk of your marketing plan and also show you some really practical ways to connect your books to the day-to-day -day operations of your business. We're going to be covering the material pretty rapidly, so don't worry about entering absolutely everything we're talking about as, as I'm going along. Um, the main goal is that you get a good framework to get you started that you can add on to you know, throughout the year, et cetera. So it's really more about creating a rough draft tonight. Also, you may want to just take your calendar and transfer it over into Google Calendar or connect it with your mobile device, something like that. And so it's really just sort of about creating this rough draft tonight. Also, we recognize that everyone's business is unique. And so we're going to try to give examples that sort of exemplify different types of horse businesses. But at the end of the day, you really have to make decisions that work for your business. OK, so let's kind of dive in here. Why do we feel like that it's possible to schedule success? Um, here's kind of what we found out, is that most horse businesses are built around events, whether it's teaching lessons or breeding mares and foals, showing horses or even selling horses, um, competing at horse shows, things like that. So your, your business is kind of geared around these events. Also, we've noticed that hosting new events, maybe like a barn party or doing riding demonstrations or clinics or fun days, different things like that that are going to be kind of geared to bringing new customers or hopefully providing additional income streams are another popular tool for growing your horse business. And kind of how smoothly these things all work together um, kind of depends on how well integrated they are with some of your non-horse related events, like the business and marketing events or things like property taxes being due or making sure you've posted your horse show sign up early enough that you get enough people going to the show, things like that. And kind of the problem is, is that since most of you are away from your desk or computer, there can be sort of a big disconnect um, between those, the necessary horse activities and the necessary business activities. So what we're doing today is just kind of give you some framework to sort of bring all those things together so that you don't really miss any, any piece, important pieces there. So step one is to enter main events into or major events into your monthly calendar. So that's going to be things like horse shows, um, summer camps, clinics. If you're breeding stable, you're going to be putting in your foaling season maybe as sort of a big chunk. The other thing to put in there are holidays, and this includes your own vacation time, everyone. I know you guys don't like to take time off, neither did I, but it's important to do. Also, major holidays, you know, Christmas, Easter, um, things that your clients are going to be involved in, Halloween, um, things like that. The other thing we like to have, especially lesson businesses put in, are um, people who have lesson programs or work with kids at all, are school holidays. Why? Because those can be really great, um, I don't know, both you know, opportunities to get, you know, maybe do a one-day camp or do a one-day clinic or something like that because parents are often sort of wondering, what to do with those ki their kids that day if they have to work or if they have the time off work because it's a national holiday, they may be looking for something for themselves to do that day. So sometimes if we don't enter those, we have some, some lost opportunities. The other thing that I think is important to add in there, and Pam and I both agree on this, is to enter any major financial events that you're aware of. And this could be things like property taxes, balloon payments, things like that. And I'm going to pass it over to Pam here to let her 
talk to you a little bit more about those things. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to use the calendar to be able to put in some of your financial important dates that you want to keep track of. For example, uh, for this month, you would want to record that your estimated taxes for 2012 are due on the 17th of January. That also happens to be the same date that your fourth quarter payroll taxes are due. So if you put it into a calendar, you can see when two important events happen at the same time. Also in this month, as far as for payroll or tax uh, information, on the 31st of January, your 1099 miscellaneous income tax form is due to your vendors. And at the same time, your employee report tax form 941 for the fourth quarter of 2011 is due. So those are the kind of things that you want to put into the calendar so that you can keep track of when they're due and you don't lose track of those. The other thing is I've got a list here of some other considerations as far as your business finances are concerned that you want to look at. And I'm just going to comment on a couple of them. They're, they're pretty self-explanatory. But, for example, the line of credit payoff. In some line of credit, there is a provision that says within the term of the line of credit, you must pay down the line to zero within the term of that line of credit. That's something that you want to make sure you know about, and if you have that, you need to verify it and make sure. And remember, it's usually when you re-up um, something like a line of credit, you're probably going to have a fee charged by the lender in order for that active line to be open, probably around $250. So you want to make sure that's in your budget. Also, another important part is the workman comp audit. Um, if you've got employees and you've got workman's comp, most policies are for the period of one year. And when the policy year begins, you probably pay an initial premium amount and then you pay monthly for the rest of the term. What you need to remember is at the end of that policy term, your workman's compensation carrier will conduct an audit of your policy. And if your payroll was more than the premium that they charge to you, you will owe an, an amount of money on top of owing for the initial premium for the next year. So if you've hired more help, you need to, for budgeting purposes, reevaluate how much you paid in your premium and look and see if you have additional premium to pay for your policy. Another thing to remember your IRA, your IRA, for 2011, you have up to April 17th in order to make a, uh, to put in a contribution for your 2011 IRA. So that would be a good thing to put on your calendar to remind yourself. So when you're looking at this calendar, it gives you a chance to customize it also for items that are specifically for your business. For example, in California, I know that there is a pretty hefty charge that the DMV gives, and it's a very high rate. So that's something that people in California put in, but people in Maryland don't have. So, you know, this is a, an overall list, and we, we'd be glad to give this list to attendees, but I, I want to make sure that you understand that this is something that you can customize. Okay, I think I'll turn it back over to Lizzie, and if you could go on to step two, that'd be great. I sure will. Okay. So step two is basically to plan around your schedule. So you're going to put some things on your um, calendar that help you with what happens pre that event. So it might be some goals and projections. It could be marketing that you're going to do, either pre-show, pre-lesson, pre-horse sale, that type of thing. Things that you're going to be doing during the event, and that could be things like identifying places where you might be able to upsell and other opportunities. Maybe it's where you have a customer that you know is looking to, maybe you're at a horse show and you're, you find there's some customers there that maybe want to purchase a horse from you, things like that. Um, also scheduling follow-ups could be things that you're thinking about during the event. Um, tracking relevant information, both your successes and financial um, documents, things like that. And then also things that happen post-event. And sort of using this pre-event, during event, and post-event strategy for planning your year, you're going to find that hopefully that it's going to make you include some pretty important things that keep your system connected, both what's happening physically in your business and what's happening financially and on a marketing area in your business. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take you through several different examples. We're going to talk about a horse show example. We're going to talk about a riding lesson example. We're going to talk about some examples for boarding stables and breeders. So we're going to just try to whip you guys through a few of the things you might be thinking about pre-event, during event, and post-event so far as the marketing and financial management areas of your business. So with that, Pam, I'm going to pass it back over to you to talk a little bit about the financial, financial aspect pre-event of, for example, a horse show. Sure. So what we're going to talk about now is when you're looking at doing an event, you want to make sure that financially it works for you. And the way that you do this is by creating a projection. And a projection is where you do a written document prior to the event that estimates your income and expense items. And, for example, on Equestrian Professionals' website, we have a horse show budget and profitability calculator. And what this does is it gives you a template to use for your projections in order to work through those line items. Now, if you're not a member of Equestrian Professional, you certainly could create, through using Excel, something that you could use to come up with your income and expense items. And um, But it's available for our members as a benefit, okay? So if what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through this calculator to see how you use it as a tool, and you use it to create a spreadsheet for your projections. Now, when you're completing it, let's say for a horse show, what you need to do is you need to work through the questions that you need to ask yourself in order to, to financially look at this horse show. You need to consider the number of horses you're going to take to the show. You need to estimate the amount of support staff that you're going to take to the show. You actually need to sit down and record your income and expense line items, item by item, so that you can look at them. And the other thing that you need to think about is you need to consider the number of horses that you're taking for yourself versus the number of horses you're taking for your client. Now, where the value comes in for this calculator is that you can use it to play with the numbers to see how, if you make adjustments, what those changes will do to your profit line. So you could do what we call what-if scenarios. What if you took this number of client horses? What if you had this number of um, support staff? And, and it's very valuable for you to be able to see the changes that you make, how it will affect you on a business sense. The other thing that's very valuable about this tool is that it gives you information for your clients. So you can actually figure out what the estimate is going to be the show bill for each one of your clients, and that's very valuable. That's something that you can use for marketing. So I think what I'll do is turn it back over to Elizabeth to talk about some of the marketing issues. Okay. Well, that's absolutely correct about some of the things as you go from looking at your books and kind of flipping over to looking at things through a marketing lens are Initially, as you're looking at your books, you're kind of looking at from looking at things from your point of view. How is this affecting me? And then the transition is when you're doing your marketing, you're thinking about how is this going to benefit the client. So you're thinking about how are you going to communicate those benefits. And like Pam said, I think one of the key things clients are often thinking about where they may be excited about going you know, to shows, but nowadays a lot of them are picking and choosing between shows. So being able to provide value by saying, hey, looks like the budget for this show is going to be around this much, whereas the budget for this one should be around this much, that can be a very helpful thing to provide for your customers. Um, so some of the things you're thinking about pre-event are, again, thinking about what the value proposition is for the customer, you know, what kind of tangible benefit they're going to get out of going to the show, and really thinking about how you're going to tap into their core motivation to encourage them to go. So it could be things like creating some features and benefits lists. Um, it could be a top ten list of reasons to go to the show. Um, the other thing you could be doing is making sure you talk to your customers that tend to get the most excited about the horse show first. And so that they're already sort of creating some buzz around the event, around the barn for you. Um, also utilizing social media. And also kind of realizing that every single thing you use, like your sign-up sheet for the show, um, those things are all marketing tools. So you really want to think about ways you can maximize that. So maybe you would be putting photos on it 
or some sort of a, you know, a, an inspirational quote or that type of thing. Similarly, with your email or newsletter reminders, and then things like just having it on your calendar that to make sure you do a, a blog or web post about it, because one of the real benefits of that is you can then utilize a keyword strategy 